Hi everybody, it's your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we are continuing topic, or excuse me, we are continuing Unit 7 by getting into topic 7.5 on Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So you might be thinking, okay, what is a Hardy? What is a Weinberg? Why do they have an equilibrium? And what does that have to do with evolution? Well, we're going to be answering that in this video. And uh, what Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is, it's basically what's happening when evolution is not occurring or why evolution is not occurring. Um, and it's a tool that we can use to figure out, well, is a population changing at a particular gene locus or is it not changing at a particular gene locus? Is the gene pool being altered by any of the five reasons that we discussed in our last video? Um, so as we said in topic 7.4 in our last video, microevolution occurs for five different reasons okay, at a particular gene locus. All right, uh, Genetic drift can change the size of a population, and we use our pinky for that. Sexual selection, okay, whether or not organisms are choosing mates based on, well, their traits. Uh, that's a ring finger. Mutation, okay, if mutations occur, that's going to change the allele frequencies of a population. Um, in that you're going to get new alleles. Gene flow, if there's any immigration or emigration in or out of a population, and of course natural selection, which we've talked about a lot at this point. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, if any of those five things are happening, microevolution is also happening, but if none of them happen, then the population is not evolving at a particular gene locus, meaning that one genotype or the amount of one genotype is not changing at all. Right, so we use our hand to remember those five, but if none of them are happening, then we're in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. We can assess whether evolution is happening at a particular locus by determining the genetic makeup of a population that is not evolving. Okay, so Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, it's almost like the opposite of microevolution. If allele frequencies remain constant from one generation to the next, that is what we call Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Okay? Um, so if the allele frequency for a dominant allele is 65% or 0 0.65 in one generation and it remains at 0 0.65 in the next generation, that's at Hardy-Weinberg. Okay? If it goes from 0 0.65 to 0 0.64, microevolution. Okay? So any change in allele frequencies is microevolution, but we're dealing with the opposite of that um, in this video today. Okay? So that means that none of those five things that we mentioned in the previous video can be happening during Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. This means that these must be assumed if a population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. There's a large population, okay, so no genetic drift is going to occur, or if there is any genetic drift, it's not going to have an impact on a, on a very, very large population. Random mating is occurring. Okay? Organisms are not choosing uh, mates based on their traits. Um, there's no mutations, there's no immigration or emigration, no gene flow moving ge genes in or out of the population, and there's no selection, all right? So that those five things need to be assumed for a, a population to be in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. And that sounds like it's really, really, really improbable, right? Um, there's got to be one of these things going on in all real populations, which is probably true, Right? Life is going to be changing from one way to the next, even if it's even if it's a tiny little change. That's why we call it microevolution. Okay, but what? So what's the good of Hardy-Weinberg? Well, we can figure out we can figure out whether a population is changing or not by comparing um, real allele frequencies and genotype frequencies to um, to what we would predict using Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium using a little bit of math. Okay, so HWE is really a tool that we use to predict uh, future genotypes and future phenotypes and allele frequencies uh, by using a little bit of math. Okay, and then we can compare it to see, evaluate whether or not a population is undergoing evolution. Okay, so uh, we determine HWE by calculating both allele and genotype frequencies. Okay, so I've been talking about allele frequencies quite a bit. All right, but the way to calculate allele frequencies is pretty simple. You calculate the number of one allele, and you divide it by the total number of alleles at a particular locus in a gene pool. Okay, so here's, uh, here's some examples. If, we, uh, if I want to find the allele frequency of the dominant allele, I have to count how many dominant alleles there are. So like these guys have two, 
these guys have one, um, and divide them by the total number of alleles, so all of the A's in the population or in the gene pool, okay? Um, genotype frequency, it's a little easier, right? I can just figure out how many of these genotypes there are out of the total number of individuals in the population, okay? So um, if allele frequencies and genotype frequencies are changing, that means we have evolution going on. But if they're not, we're in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Okay, so uh, let's get some practice calculating gene and allele free, genotype and allele frequencies. Um, so here's our population. We have a group of flowers. If you're a homozygous dominant flower at this particular gene locus, uh, you have red flowers. So homozygous dominant is red. Um, if you're homozygous recessive, you have white flowers. And if uh, this is demonstrating incomplete dominance here, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and the heterozygote, if you have one dominance allele and one recessive allele, you end up having pink flowers, right? Uh, we have 320 red, 20 white, and 160 pink, which makes us, brings us to a total of 500 total flowers, right? So uh, I got to move my face again here. What's the frequency of our dominance allele? Okay, so uh, if you do the math here, if we have 500 individuals, each individual, you know, because sexually reproducing organisms, uh, they have 1,000 total alleles in the gene pool. If there's 500 individuals, each individual has two alleles, right? So uh, what we got to do, right, here's, uh, here's our homozygous dominant. Each one of our homo homozygous dominant flowers has two dominant alleles, all right? So we have 320 of them. You multiply that by two, and we get 640 dominant alleles. Um, then we take a look at our heterozygotes, okay? How many dominant alleles do each of them have? Well, they have one, right? So we multiply 160 times one allele, and we get 160 total dominant alleles from this group, okay? So if we want to figure out the total number of dominant alleles out of the, um, out of the whole gene pool, okay, we add these up, 640 plus 160, and we get 800 total dominant alleles, total big A's. Okay, now, to get the frequency, we simply divide that by the total number of alleles, which in this case is 1,000, and we get our allele frequency being 0.8, or 80%. That means 80% of all of the alleles in the gene pool at this locus here, for this, for this trait, for this genotype, are dominant. Okay, so how about if the... Uh, if the frequency of the dominant allele is 80%, well, you might be able to calculate this in your head right away. If dominant is 80%, what's the frequency of the recessive allele, okay? We, if we were going the long way, we could, we could do the same thing as we did before, right? We have 20 white flowers, which have two recessive alleles each, okay? 20 times two, that gives us 40, uh, 40 recessive alleles, plus 160 from these guys, because they only have one recessive allele, add those up, and we get 200 total recessive alleles divided by 1,000, and our allele frequency for the recessive allele is 0 0.2, okay? It was 0 0.8 before for dominant alleles, it's 0 0.2 for recessive. You add those together, and what do you get? You get one, okay? That adds up to all of the total alleles in the, uh, in the gene pool, okay? So here's one of two equations that we're gonna be using here to discuss Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, okay? P plus Q equals 1. Seems simple, right? Because it is, okay? Uh, so P represents the frequency of one allele, and Q rec represents the frequency of another allele, just like we calculated, and together they equal 1, okay? So uh, if P was our recessive allele frequency, or excuse me, your dominant allele frequency, and Q was our recessive allele frequency, it would go 0 0.8 plus 0 0.2 equals 1 right? And then that's how we would know that, okay, we calculated the right allele frequencies, okay? So this is something that I'm going to have you write down, absolutely. Um, and, you know, give an interpretation of each of these variables here, frequency of allele number one, frequency of allele number two for Q, okay? Uh, we can use these allele frequencies to predict the ratios of the genotypes in the next generation, okay? So we can use these, what we just calculated, 0 0.8 and 0 0.2, we can use those to predict the ratios of what, what's, what's the next generation going to look like. Okay, if we breed all those flowers together okay, and we follow the five rules of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, what's the next generation going to look like? 
Okay, so uh, let's go back to this. Let's do a little more math. All right, so our P is uh, 0 0.8. That's the frequency of our dominant allele. What's the probability? Okay, how, how, what's the percent chance that we're going to have homozygous dominant flowers? Okay, what's the ratio of homozygous dominant flowers that we can predict to see in the next generation? Okay, all we got to do is really, okay, if this is the frequency of, if 80% of all of our alleles in the gene pool are dominant alleles, okay, and we need to pick two, okay, we can use probability laws, and we can just calculate 0 0.8 times 0 0.8, and then we're going to end up with, you know, 64% chance. There's a 64% chance that um, the flowers in the next generation are going to be red. Okay, they're going to have this genotype of homozygous dominant. Okay, so uh, yeah, like I said, we have an 80% chance and then another 80% chance. You multiply them together and you get a 64% chance of two, choosing two A or uh, homo excuse me, dominant alleles. There we go. Okay, so P squared equals 0 0.64. Okay, so uh, what's the probability of getting homozygous recessive. If Q, which is our other allele frequency, is 0 0.2, okay? Well, it's the same thing. We have a 20% chance of, draw, of uh, picking up a, um, think about this, like you're grabbing it out of a bag almost, right? Uh, so if there's a 20% chance of, of, excuse me, a recessive allele, right? And then there's another 20% chance of getting another recessive allele, you can just multiply these two values together, okay, and you're going to get 4%, or 0 0.04. Same thing over here. What's the probability of getting a heterozygote, of getting a pink flower, right, if P is 0 0.8 and Q is 0 0.2? We have an 80% chance of getting a P and 20% uh, chance of getting a Q. Right? If we multiply those together, okay, we're going to end up with, well, 16, okay, but we have to do it twice, right? So uh, 0 0.8 times 0 0.2 plus 0 0.8 times 0 0.2 is 32%. Okay, so uh, and if we add up these these totals together, hey, we're going to end up with 1. All right, so uh, we're going to end up with 64% homozygous dominant, 4% homozygous recessive, and 32% heterozygous. Okay, there it is. Right? We're basically doing Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium right now. All we're figuring out are what are the chances, what's the probability of each genotype in the next generation if we breed all these flowers together, all right? So this is the other equation that I'm asking you to know for Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, all right? P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1, okay? And then this goes in tandem with P and Q, all right? So P is the allele frequency, right? P squared is the expected frequency of the homozygous dominant, okay, big A, big A. 2PQ is the expected frequency of our heterozygotes, okay, and Q squared is the expected frequency of our homozygous recessive individuals, okay, just using the same probability rules and the math that we just saw, okay, we can predict the genotypes for the next generation based on what our allele frequencies are, okay? So, check this out. Here's another, uh, here's another example coming through here. All right, if we have, you know, 360 green beetles uh, or homozygous dominant, 480 heterozygous and 160 homozygous recessive, okay, we calculate the genotype frequencies based on this, okay, we can get the allele frequencies um, based on, well, based on this same information here, okay. And if this population is staying in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, then that means that um, the allele frequencies and the genotype frequencies are going to stay the same. Okay, so this is kind of walking through our whole, uh, our whole method that we just did, right? Um, so it's kind of a Punnett square. You can, this is another way to solve for Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, kind of using a Punnett square. If P is 0 0.8, like our, like our example from before with the flowers, um, and Q is 0 0.2, right? We can kind of cross them like this and calculate the probability of getting each in, the, in that same way that we just did, okay? But I don't want to confuse you too much. This is another method of solving it. If you like this better, great. But uh, 
Yeah, it's, I, I find it easier a lot of times just to use the equations. Um, okay, so let's run through an example because this, this might be a little confusing at this point. And we're, you know, if you're in my class, we're going to get a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of practice with this. Okay, so uh, let's run through a couple examples here together. All right, so uh, here's a new population that has 700 individuals. 85 have a, a homozygous dominant genotype, 320 are heterozygous, and 295 are homozygous recessive. What are the frequencies of big A and little a? Let's find out, okay? Um, so think about this for a second. We got 85 homozygous dominant individuals, which means that each of those have two, um, two dominant alleles. Okay? So we go 85 times 2, and then we have 320 heterozygotes. So we add that to 320 times 1, and we get a total of 490 uh, dominant alleles. Okay? And if we are looking for the recessive alleles, the recessive allele frequencies, okay, we have 295 that are homozygous recessive, so we multiply that by 2 to get the total number of little a's and add that to 320 because heterozygotes have one recessive allele, and we add up to the total to get 900 recessive alleles, little a's. Okay? And as we know, if we have 700 individuals, we have 1,400 total alleles. So what's our next step? Dividing the number of alleles of one type divide it, and divide that by the total. Okay? So there it is, 490 divided by 1,400, and we're going to get 0 0.35 as our P. And 910 divided by 1,400, we're going to get 0 0.65 as our Q. Okay? There you have it. Um, so if you did not end up with these answers, or maybe if you're just listening, uh, go ahead and try it and see if you can arrive at the same conclusion. Okay? Uh, now, this is a different problem. Uh, the frequency of allele A, like little a, homozyg or excuse me, the recessive allele um, for a population is 0 0.45, and it's in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So what are the expected frequencies of homozygous dominant, heterozygous, and homozygous recessive? Okay, well, let's figure that out. Okay, the first equation that we use for this is P plus Q equals 1. All right, if we know Q, then we can easily solve for P, right? So uh, if we just sub out 0 0.45 for Q, we get P plus 0 0.45 equals 1, and that means P is 0 0.55. All right, now that we have P, and now that we have Q, we can easily solve for the, what the frequencies are of the uh, expected frequencies of this population in terms of their genotype are going to be. Okay, if, we, uh, if we're solving for our homozygous dominant, and our big A, big A, all we got to do is take P squared, 0 0.55 squared. We expect a homozygous dominant frequency of 30.25, 0 0.3 or 0 0.3025, okay? Now, what do we have to do for heterozygotes? 2PQ, right? 2 times 0 0.55 times 0 0.45, and we get 0 0.495 heterozygotes, so we can expect about 49.5% to be heterozygotes in our population. And then what about AA, or uh, homozygous recessive? 0 0.45 squared, okay? Q squared, that's how we get the homozygous recessive genotype frequency. Right, 0 0.55 squared, and we're going to expect a genotype frequency of 20.25. Okay, and just to double check our work here, here's our three answers. All right, and you know you did Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, right? If all, of your, um, if all of your frequencies add up to a total of one. Okay, so if you can sub in P squared, 2PQ, and Q squared, your values here, they should all add up to one. All right, so this is a lot to take in. This is challenging. Please let me know if you have any questions. Okay, please, please, please let me know if you have any questions. We're going to get a lot of practice with this if you're in my class. All right, uh, have a good one. See you later.